Hey, welcome everyone. In this video, I'm going to teach you how to stream your PS5 to an Android device. Now, if you want to see the written instructions on how to get this done, you can find a link to my website in the video description. And before we continue any further, there's the main requirements you want to consider. The first is that you need a Sony PlayStation Network account. This is a free account, and it's going to be the account that's used to log in on your PlayStation 5. You're going to need this login information handy when you're ready to stream it on your Android device. This also works best if your PS5 is on a wired Ethernet connection, and if your Android device is on a strong Wi-Fi connection, so they're both on the same network, but you want to have a strong connection for both of them, of course, for the best uh, playback of video game streaming. So to get started, you want to go over to your PS5, and here you want to go to the main system settings menu, then go to the system settings, then remote play on the left, and then turn on enable remote play. Then while still under the system page, select power saving on the left, and then select features available in rest mode. In this section, make sure stay connected to internet and enable turning on PS5 from network or both on. Step 3 basically means if you ever put your PS5 into rest mode, you can turn it on from the network over your Android device. Okay, so now the PS5 is ready for streaming and set up your Android device. So the first thing to do is connect your PS5 controller to your Android device, which is super easy. On your PS5 controller, press and hold the PlayStation button and the share button together at the same time until the light starts to flash. When the light starts to flash, that's when you know it's in pairing mode. Now keep in mind that these steps I'm going to tell you right now varies from Android device to Android device because every manufacturer has a different settings menu. So I'm going to be explaining these steps as if it was on a Samsung device because they're the most popular Android devices, but the steps are relatively the same across all Android devices. So what you want to do is go to the main system settings menu of your Android device, then connections, make sure Bluetooth is on, and then open up the Bluetooth options, and look for wireless controller from the available options the device and pair with. Once that's done, you basically have your PS5 controller connected with your Android device. Now what you need to do is download the Remote Play app. To do this, simply go to the Google Play Store and then just search for Remote Play. But if you want a direct link to the Google Play Store for this app, I'll put a link to that in the video description. You'll then be prompted to enter your Sony credentials. These are the same credentials you need to have logged in into your PS5 console. So typically on this menu, you'll be shown if you want to connect to a PS5 or a PS4 console. I've already done this, so you can see my PS5 is already de detected. But on the screen that you see at the top right, there's a gear icon. If you select that, you basically have other options here available. You know, vibration options, video quality for remote play, which is pretty useful if, you know, maybe you're using mobile data. Um, but of course, you see the cap is 720p, which you know is a little low considering a lot of mobile screens on Android are 1080p or higher nowadays, but just wanted to show you that. If you're on mobile data, if you want to reduce the amount of mobile data you're using because maybe you have limited data plan on your monthly allowance, you can also adjust stuff here. Or maybe you want to turn off mobile data use altogether. Um, so you do have some additional options here which might be useful to you. Then connect to your console. Again, if you're searching for it for the first time, tap on PS5. I already have mine set up, so I just tapped on the existing one that it found already. And then what it's going to do is bring up a virtual controller layout if I'm uh, in a certain layout of the screen. But if I rotate it over, to you see you get a full screen mode. Of course, in my opinion, the best way to use this is not the virtual layout, but to use the controller. I'm using it with my PS5 controller right now. Overall, I find that streaming is pretty good. It's not too bad. Um, it works surprisingly well. Again. The PS5 that I have is on a, a wired Ethernet connection, and my cell phone is on a strong Wi-Fi connection, both on the same network. Now, if you plan to do this over mobile data, it can be done, as you notice in the app. The thing to keep in mind is that you want to make sure that your home Wi-Fi network has a decent upload speed because it's sending the data from your PS5 over the Internet and then back into your mobile device. The other thing to keep in mind is that the further away you are geography-wise from your cell phone to your PS5, the worse the connection will be because of latency. So your upload speed won't help. That's just a simple issue with literally the physical distance between you and your PS5. So just something to keep in mind. But that's pretty much how you get it done. Now, if at any point your Android device is not connected to your PS5, there's a way you can brute force it to show up a manual code instead. If it doesn't work, you'll usually get that prompt on the Android device telling you exactly what to do and what to select on your PS5. It's super simple. It's kind of a brute force way of manually syncing the two devices together works super simple. But that's pretty much a wrap for me. So if you found this video useful, be sure to check my social links in the video description as well as my website link. Hit the like button, it does help. Subscribe and thanks for watching.